YouTubers, welcome to this video, uh, the ninth video on the Land Rover Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild. In this video I get through some very important work, but don't quite complete the engine. It's uh, measuring the compression ratio, putting the cylinder heads on, the tappets, push rods, rocker shafts go on. Uh, I've got to do some rocker shaft shimming, I fit the flex plate and the um, crank position sensor, and I've had a haircut. So now it is on to the heads. So one thing I think I'm going to do is there's been so much skimming, just as a sort of a, a last minute check really, I'm hoping not to find, I'm not anticipating finding a problem, I'm going to measure the, um, the compression ratio. So I'll take a few measurements with feeler gauges off these piston tops, uh, deck clearance, head gasket thickness, and then um, I'll do a, I might video it actually, uh, measure the volume of the combustion chamber on the heads using a piece of glass, some sealer and uh, petrol uh, with a let me think, syringe, I have a syringe I can use, it's a 5mm syringe, basically if this takes 4 syringes it's 12 to 1, if it takes 5 syringes it's 10 or 10 and a half, I got it on a piece of paper inside but if I can get it over 5 syringes we're, we're golden but um, yeah let's see. Yeah, it's that then, isn't it? So it's 24 cc's. Okay, so it is actually coming out now, but that was 24 cc's. Uh, so I think it might be alright. <laughs> you see the petrol dissolving the sealant already? <laughs> Lovely. Okay. I'll come back to you with the compression ratio. Right, at this point, folks, I don't think I told you, but the compression ratio calculated is 10.8, uh, which is fine. It's got a LPG kit fitted. I'm going to be putting high-octane fuel in it because it has a very small petrol tank, sort of £20 is about all you can fit in there. Uh, and I don't want E5, or sorry, E10 petrol hanging around in those fuel lines for extended periods of time. So uh, I'm going to go with high-octane in there anyway. And plus, the majority of the time, it'll be running on gas, which has an octane number of over 110. So you got your uh, 95 at the pumps. So you pay more for your 98 octane. Oh octane fuel and LPG's got over 110 so high compression no problem here um, yeah let's get those fitted then right gasket on you can see I'm not quite happy with that so I trimmed it with a file just to move it left to right a little bit better to align with the cylinders then in with the bolts tighten them down by hand I think I've done the talking in sequence before I move on to the second head the gasket fitted better on this head so straight on it went same with the bolts torque them up there we go folks ain't she sweet quote my friend Tom who I used to work with long ago look at it there and it's all it's V glory <laughs> here we go so I've got 16 of these tappets my good friend Tom uh, advised me on these I got them from Auto Dock, a German company and they are AE tappets which we believe to be a good make uh, I subsequently, when I was taking the engine apart, found AE was written on the bottom of the pistons. So the OEM pistons are AE pistons. So that puts a little bit of faith in uh, in the product. So I'm going to oil them up with uh, some of the thick Lucas assembly oil lubricant and drop all 16 of those into their guides. There we go, assembly lube. Hydraulic tappets going in. Push rods next, all with oil on the ends, and then the rocker shafts. Right, the push rods are pushing the tappets really quite far into the buckets. So I'm pretty sure we need some um, shims under these posts to raise the rockers up. Uh, so the, I believe from a video, I need to look this up and confirm it just in a few different places, but 20 to 50 thou it says, uh, below its resting position is where it should sit. So what I'm going to do is use this um, vernier calibre here to push onto the top of the bucket, uh, the pistons sorry, in the bucket, measure that and then release the rockers and do the same measurement again uh, and then I'll know how far in they're pushed. So what I'm going to do is make sure the engine is, is turned to a suitable place where these uh, are not being pushed at all and I can measure all those, see what I would need to get them between 20 and 50 thou uh, and then do something clever with the rocker ratio, 1.6. I'll look it up later. But for now, I'm just going to do all these measurements. So measure as we are, and then measure with all the rockers released. 
Here we go. Measury, measury, measury. Okay, so I've got numbers now. I've got uh, these are the numbers. Uh, how far the piston was from the top of the bucket when there was no pressure, when the cam lobe was opposite the tappet. And this is the distance from the piston to the top of the bucket when it's all relaxed. So the, as it was before I'd put the tappets in the engine, if you like. So I'll subtract these two numbers, convert to thou, and see how far out we are. I'm now waiting for rocker shims to arrive. I've had a day off today and I'm going to um, hopefully get those rocker shims tomorrow. In the meantime, I've got an evening and I want to make use of it, so uh, I don't want to put the engine in just yet, but I'm going to take the engine off the stand, put the flex plate on, uh, I can put the rear crank seal on the flex plate, I can lock the flex plate when it's back on the stand and tighten the front pulley nut as well. And then I'm another few steps closer really to having it ready to put in. So hopefully I'll get those rocker shims tomorrow and carry on with this uh, top end stuff. There we go folks. I thought I was recording a time lapse, but apparently I wasn't, so I'm afraid there's nothing more to see but the finished job. It would have been pretty funny to watch because it was a real palaver getting the crank seal in. And then I, um, when trying to tighten the front uh, crank pulley, I smacked my head. So he really missed the treat. Banneries, banneries, banneries. Right, a few more days has passed. I've got uh, the shims now. They've arrived. I've got 45 thou, 30 thou, and 15 thou. Eight of each. Yeah, eight of each. So I have done the calculations and I need 65, quite a bit really. So I need one of the 15 and one of the 45 under each of the rocker posts. So I'm going to put those in now. And then I will, all in one uh, time lapse I think, I'll put those in, tighten the rockers down, re-measure the clearance, what's it called, the preload. And uh, hopefully that'll be it and I can get on with the inlet manifold. Um, there's obviously a talk sequence for those as well, so I'll do that talking up as well. So let's get on with it. This job went on long into the evening, fitting different combinations of shims. Eventually I made my own shims, seven or eight thou thick, out of a paint tin on the suggestion of my friend Tom. I'm not going to go into detail here, I've got loads of video clips on this that I've chosen to omit, because it's actually not important. This shim preload, this tappet preload, sorry, shimming, is not as important as they'd have you believe. So tune in for a video, several videos down the line, I'll go into details about why that is. Needless to say, I, I went way overboard with this and didn't need to. So there it is folks. It's the end of the night. It's done. I'm now onto the inlet manifold. So um, the valley gasket, inlet manifold and the rocker covers and the engine is built. But it's, uh, yeah, as I said, it's very, very late now. I've got to go to bed. So there we go. I'm going to leave that there. That's all for this video, folks. Hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, in the next video, I get the last little bits put together. Actually, I prime the engine on the stand there, spinning it on the starter motor, making sure oil's getting to everywhere it needs to go, and uh, and finish the engine so it is an item ready to fit to the car in the next video. Hope you're enjoying this series. I'm loving making these videos and doing the job. Join me again in the next video.